Can we talk about some deep stuff, bro? Yeah, you said you wanted to do that. Earlier, I do. I do. But then talk. I had to go pee. So I, I, I want to talk about, and you know what? And you keep doing that, and I'm OCD, so I have to like finish what I'm saying. Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, I see how it is. It's fine. It's when fine, I looked whatever. at you, I was like, "How much time are we at right now? <laughs> oh, we're over an hour." Yeah. 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 I could cut you off right now, bro, and keep it moving, bro. All right. But I don't. Then go ask ask your deep question. I missed hanging out with you, by the I way. I miss hanging out with you, bro. It's, it's always good. I'm glad to see that you're doing really, really well. Thank you, man. Anyway, back to the deep stuff. Uh, can I tell you the story that you told me about your mom? Do you have any oh, yeah, idea yeah. how many people I've told that story to? Not telling them it's you, but like I think that is the the most beautiful testimony mm -hmm. I think I've ever heard in my life. Like I Thank truly you. think of it. Like there's so many times where I really do, like I choke up thinking about it. Because mm. the way you told me, I don't know, man. It was like something that when I heard it, I was like, my God, what kind of faith does this woman work mm. off of? And where could I be in my life? Yeah. Is it something you're comfortable sharing? I know you made a video yeah, yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, I wrote a, I had released a book last year. The whole story's I, in I, there. Jessica, go grab his book. Actually, I put it on my, it's right there on the, yeah, I grabbed it out and I forgot to be honest. I literally put it out to did not you, forget. Did you read it? Not a page. I knew you wouldn't. I'm just kidding. I read the whole thing. <laughs> did you right? actually? Yeah, do chapter one. The whole, the whole Duh. chapter one. <laughs> I read the whole thing, all of chapter one. <laughs> no, the whole book was about your like relationship with God and your in your industry uh, that you're in. Yeah, it's like the whole, um, basically my life, but it, it it goes through like certain stories and then kind of like what I've learned through them. So it's it's not so much like it's not like a self help book or like a Christian book per se, but it is. It's basically me t recapping stories of my life, but not just my life, like from my family's life, even history of my family from like my grandparents and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, just so, so what you were saying, the story of my mom is, is all in there, like in detail, a mission for meaning is what the book is called a mission for meaning. Um, I didn't even know we were going to talk about my book on here. I want to, because this is a great book and it's something that people need to read when they're going through turbulence mm -hmm. and they need to know how to get out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I want to open it up, uh, from where I believe the faith was a mustard seed that mm -hmm. blew up to be something beautiful. And yeah. I believe that had to be your mother. Mm -hmm. If I had to, a point of view on it. Mm -hmm. um, do you, I would love for you to tell the story. Yeah, yeah. I would tell the story, but I just, I feel like I'd, I don't want to mess it up. I yeah, no, 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 you're good. So basically my, wait, hold on one second. Jess? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Where did she go? No, it's okay. It's okay. Just let her up. I wanted her to hear the story from you, but she she reviews every pod. Oh, okay, cool. But I I I always tell her this story, and I want oh, really? her to hear it from you. Yeah, I don't even remember how much I would have told you, because that would have been years I, I, ago. I literally remember it verbatim how you said it. Like I remember. You uh, want to just tell it for me? No, no. no, no I remember the locations. Where? I remember when she was at the gym. I remember like. Dang, I mean, that's crazy. I remember every like when you told it to me. I don't think there. I truly don't think there was a day that I didn't think about it. Wow. It was, it was something that really just, cause I, I looked at you and I was like, where does this man's faith come from? Cause like when you see somebody that has that type of faith, you're like that, like usually when a man has that type of faith, they've had uh, an obstacle that God mm -hmm. had to show them like some type of mercy where they're yeah, just yeah. like opened about it. Um, but please go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess the, the mercy that I was shown specifically is like, I shouldn't have been born. So I'll just, I guess, start there and then rewind a bunch. Yeah. Me and my siblings shouldn't have been born. So <clears throat> my, um, my mom, before she met my dad, she was, uh, in a previous relationship. And then my dad was also, uh, married before as well. And in these separate relationships, my mom ended up contracting HIV. So this was like early nineties or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly when she contracted it, whether it was like back end of the eighties or early nineties, but around then. And then, uh, my dad had <clears throat> in his previous marriage, he actually had an abortion, um, of his, the, his first child. And, um, fast forward a bit. My mom finds out that she got HIV from her, uh, from her previous relationship, the guy who she was with and just like, it was basically like my life is over. And if you don't know, HIV is the virus that leads to AIDS. So in the early nineties, this was just like, you're going to die. Yeah. It's basically what, what it it's was. It's a big deal <clears throat> now 
back then when the doctor, God forbid, gave you that news, it's a death sentence. Yeah. And in the family's eyes. She was given 10 years to live back then. And she, her life was over. Basically, she was like, I, I'm no longer. No one's gonna love me. I'm not gonna be part of a family. I am not gonna be able How to. How old was she? Mid twenties. I got I got twenties around our age. I wanna, I wanna just take a second, like, really <clears throat> think about this when you're in your twenties. Like when you're in your twenties, you think all you're invincible. You think about is the future and like mm -hmm. what you're gonna bring, and imagine being like, oh, twenties is all you got. Like it. To, that's that's the real problems. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I feel like nowadays societies, when they get problems, they like they over exaggerate it. People need problems now. Mm -hmm. This was a problem. This no, is this something was... that it was literally soul crushing. Yeah, crazy. And she's trying to figure it out. Like meeting God in the process wasn't really her. Her parents were Catholic, so she was kind of reciting these prayers that her mom gave her and things like that. And um, she ends up meeting my dad. They were both personal training at the time and they kick it off. Their relationship starts progressing and she t has to, at some point is like, ends up telling him like, Hey, I need to tell you something. You're not going to want to be with me, but this is, this is what it is. Spills the beans, tells her about, or, or she tells him about <clears throat> HIV that she has and, and the whole thing. And my dad at that point was basically saying to himself, my mom, when I was 16, died from cancer and I loved her till the day she died. So I can handle this. I'm going to do the same thing with this woman who I love, which is, which is wild. And they're both not like full believers at the time, I guess you could say. So they're, they're just, I don't know. It was like, God's kind of like protecting them during this whole, yeah. during this whole thing or like giving them these, these, you know, um, I just can't believe what, uh, sorry. Yeah. It's crazy. Sorry. Man. Fuck. I get it. <clears throat> All I keep thinking is local kind of weight was lifted off of her shoulders when she had another human being being like, I get what you're going through mm -hmm. um, and it's okay. I'm with you. Like that shit's, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, wild. bro, think about it. Think about falling <clears throat> in love with somebody and like. You're yeah, saying I have a limited time with you. Not only that yeah. I have a limited time, but it's kind of like, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but it's kind of like a plague. Like. I don't even know if you want to be involved in yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you're releasing this side of you that you're so ashamed of mm -hmm. and so scared of. And the person goes, it's okay. I love you. Regardless, mm -hmm. we'll handle this together. Bro, that alone is like... Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So that happens. They end up getting pregnant, which is the last thing, especially at the time, last thing you want to do if you have HIV. Yeah, because it's in the bloodstream. Yeah, yeah, with my older brother. He was like a year and a few months older than me. Um, so my parents are trying to figure out, they're like, what do we do? They have no idea. Like they're trying to get advice from people, family members, doctors. And you know, the advice that they're getting at the time is like, you, you want to, you need to abort the baby because they're more likely than not going to come out with HIV. And they're trying to figure it out. Man, she's been getting hit with some punches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, so they're trying to figure it out. And, um, my dad is, and I, I forget exactly where this falls on the timeline. In in my book, it's all there chronologically. So, my dad at one point through like all this is has like opened up a Bible that his, uh, I think one of his sisters gave it to him, but he opened up a Bible that he had, and he started reading it, and he's like, "This is ridiculous. This is stupid. This means whatever." He throws it back in his nightstand, you know, or yeah. in the drawer, or whatever. And um, that night. He has a dream, and I mentioned that his mom passed when he was 16. This was the first time he had a dream about his mom since he was, since, since forever. Basically, this is the first time, like, he saw his mom again Yeah. since she passed. And in the dream, he is with his older brother working, like, renovating a kitchen. So he has a tool belt on and is in the kitchen doing work in this kitchen. And outside of the kitchen window, he can see across the street, and he sees his mom walking into the church that's across the street. So he freaks out. He's like, oh my gosh, mom, I haven't seen you. And you're, so he, he takes his tool belt off, puts it on the counter, runs out the door, goes to his mom, goes, mom, I'm, I haven't seen you in so long. How are you doing? This is crazy. Like, you know, just like freaking out. And his mom just goes, you need to turn around, go back and keep doing what you were doing. So he goes back, puts a tool belt back on and keeps working again. And that was basically the way he kind of like interpreted what was happening. And obviously it's like through his mom in the dream, but like God speaking to him was your, you picked up 
this tool belt, the Bible, and you need to keep reading it. Mm. You know, she said, keep doing what you're doing. And in the dream, he put his tool belt back on. And it was like wow. that same time that he like opened up the Bible and was like this ridiculous and threw it away. And then he had the dream saying like, keep doing what you're doing. So anyway, that was like one of the things that got him in this like quest for finding his faith. And then come this situation with my mom, they're pregnant with my older brother and they are getting all this advice that, Hey, we need it. You should abort the baby, all this stuff. Then God appears to my dad in another dream. So and in his mind, he thinks that it's a better thing and a, in a, in a more humane thing to say goodbye to the kid that I, I, I don't think so. At the time, he, I think he held a lot of regret for the first one because he basically convinced his ex-wife to, to, to get, get the abortion because he was right. like, I think they were both in college still and he was like, we can't have a kid, you know? So he, it was, a lot was like on his shoulders, shoulders as far as like, he just felt guilty about it. Yeah. Um, and he has this next dream when they're trying to figure out what to do with his pregnancy and God basically, and I know this, this will be controversial probably, but no, God it's appeared, not. Cause this is what stuck with me. Yeah. God appears to him and says, if you kill this baby, I will surely let you die. And the way he interpreted that was that God was going to take his hand of protection off of him. Cause up until this point, like there was things that happened that clearly like, even though he my dad favor. didn't believe in God, there's still fa yeah, favor there, mm -hmm. protection or whatever. Um, so that happens and he's like, oh, all right, talk to my mom about it. And, I, you know, they come to the decision that they're going to just have faith to keep this baby and pray that the baby has is healthy. And they end up getting married uh, like six months before, seven months before uh, my brother was born. They're, you know, my dad's freaking out, gets plastered the night of their wedding, just like. He's just, he's, he's just, yeah, falling he's like apart. falling apart. Yeah, yeah. basically. And <clears throat> which by the way, if I, can I just pin this? Yeah. yeah. Um, how merciful is this whole situation? He was going down a wrong path. God showed him mercy in him. Mm -hmm. And now he's starting walking down the right path. Mm -hmm. But I want to highlight this. He was still falling apart. Mm -hmm. And this is what yeah, I well. need people to understand. When you're walking the direction God wants you to walk, they expect perfection. No. But it's you, yeah. you're falling apart more and more and more. And that's what faith is. Mm -hmm. You're you're trusting when you give it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I tell people, when you give the Lord your problems, give him everything. Mm -hmm. Give him your anxiety, your depression, your worries. Cast your anxieties onto him mm -hmm. so he could take that away from you. A lot of people don't pray uh, pray for peace and, 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 and joy, which he is the father of. Mm. And your father, during this situation, I guarantee it, was so stressed, he was praying for the right answers, but I guarantee he wasn't praying for peace and comfort. Mm. And that's where he started relying on the booze, and he relied on worldly things. And that caused him to a little spin out. Mm -hmm. But people don't understand that that's our choice. We, mm -hmm. He could have easily just trusted in the Lord and known but this is a turning point in his life. He doesn't mm -hmm. even know who God is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for him to put on his belt is already the top of his mountain for his mm -hmm. mindset. So people, when they're it's starting their relationship with God, I always tell them, like, yo, mm -hmm. like, it's not a perfect road. It's just going to lead you to a perfect place. Mm. So I'm really happy that you 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 highlighted the fact that even though God came to him twice, yeah. as a human, we always do this, he could come to us twice and still and still be weary of our... That's why he says, yeah, be so good, angry, bro. but sin not. Mm. Be worried, but sin not. You, yeah. You're going to have these emotions. How are you dealing with them? And he, regardless of him getting drunk at the wedding, he's still moving in the direction that he should be moving. Yeah. I'm sorry to pause it. I just wanted to make sure that people know that if yeah, they're yeah. dealing with something like this. No, that's so good, bro. Thanks for thanks for elaborating on that. That's dude, the scripture you quoted too. Let's go. Um, so he's at the wedding. At the wedding. Well, fast forward. So they get married. That would be Christmas Eve, ninety two, ninety three July. My brother's born. Now, at the time, they don't know. There was like multiple ways of which the virus could 
like form, form yeah. in the baby. It could be there right away and stay. It could be there right away and then disappear, actually. It could not be, not there, be there and then appear. Then appear yeah. And then it could just not be there and then not come back. So it was like, it was just kind of like flip a coin. But most of the time, baby, I'm pretty sure most of the time babies were born having HIV because there's so much the birthing process and blood, especially with the mom being the one having HIV, like the likelihood that the baby was going to have HIV was pretty high. Well, they're not going to tell her to abort it if it's not a high risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Especially back in the day, because remember, technology and science move. And this is back when it wasn't too long when the queen passed away from AIDS. So like Mm. this is at the highest level. Yeah, exactly. All of this. I think my, my mom had just heard that. Was it uh, a basketball player, Magic Johnson? Did he have HIV? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he yeah, still yeah. does. Yeah. Not anymore. That's a conspiracy. But let's just get back into this. because. Anyway, she heard that he had HIV and was like, you know, there's just like so much news and craziness about HIV and people getting it and people passing from it and all that, all that stuff and dying from AIDS and everything. So they, this, they opt to... Not the, the way that they would know for certain that the babies would have or not have the virus would be when the babies are two years old. And by the time they turn two, it would be there for sure and then stay or it wouldn't be there and like disappear or whatever. However, it would end up happening. So they're like, all right, let's just wait till he's two. But then they get pregnant with me. Not that long after, like a few months, because I was only born 15 months after my brother. <clears throat> so then they're like, all right, we're pregnant with a second one. Let's just wait till he's two. Then we'll test them both. In the meantime, just have faith that this is going to work out. And then we end up being fully HIV free two years later. Then down, down the road, my younger sister and my younger brother born, were all HIV free. My dad has not gotten HIV since then. Um, and my mom now is like 30 years past when she first received that 10 year death sentence. So yeah, the whole story is like amazing and God just completely transformed. That's I got this like 1964 tattoo right here. Just both my parents were born in 64. So it was kind of like, I don't know. There's something special about my parents really being the first generation that God radically transformed and it completely changed That's the legacy I called of her our the family. Mustard seed, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I called it a mustard seed. <clears throat> I guarantee you if your mom would see how you turned out and how your siblings turned out and how your relationship with God turned out and your wife turned out and your kid turned out. I think she would even sacrifice her life, Mm. but she didn't even need to. Mm. The reason I'm bringing that up is because sometimes when God throws something at us, the most beautiful quote that I could feel could relate to this situation is the quote that I recently read that I thought was beautiful is in the moment that you feel like you're being buried alive and you can't breathe and you have no idea, you're just chilled in darkness. You have no direction. Fear not. You're not buried. You're planted. Mm. And how you water that situation is where it's going to grow in your life. So, Wow. When you're down at your very, 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 very worst, cast everything to him. Mm-hmm. And I think every human being needs that point in their life because if we did not need doctors, there would be no doctors. If we did not have firemen, is because we did not have any fire. And I think that there is a lot of problems on this earth that we need a Lord and Savior for. Mm. So if we just walked around parading and having no issues and no problems and no nothing, we would not then need a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is, I think your mom and me and you and Jessica and anybody who has a relationship with God will know immediately and say, there's nothing that happened to me that I would want to not happen to me. Mm. Because it's built where I am today.